Hey guys, it's Michael. Today is your Monday, July 6th, second stimulus check and second stimulus package update. We have a lot of information to go over. In today's video, we're going to go over states reopening, specifically government offices are reopening and bringing back thousands of employees to work, and the U.S. set a record high for the 27th straight day on Sunday. And then we're going to get into the stimulus update from Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia, who said he is very optimistic about the economy moving forward, and he goes on to speak about the second stimulus package and how the enhanced unemployment benefits are not going to be needed in the second stimulus package package. But before we get into it, I want to let you guys know that we're doing a $50 free stock giveaway. All you need to do to be eligible is like the video down below, be subscribed to the channel, and comment down below the three stocks I mentioned at the end of today's video. If you don't want to enter, you can still go ahead and get two free stocks valued up to $1,400 when you download the Webull investing app using the link down below. Anyways, let's jump right into it and let's go over states reopening first. So with states reopening, the federal workforce in the U.S. is returning to the office under inconsistent reopening plans. As virus cases are starting to increase all across the U.S., some of the federal government's 2.1 million employees are heading back to their offices in one of the few regions where confirmed infections is actually declining, which is Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. So Everett Kelly, who is the national president of the American Federation of Government Employees, said federal employees have been working throughout the entire pandemic, they've been working from home, and to move them to a work site. So the administration can say they reopened the government. She said that that is simply irresponsible and it is not a good idea just to bring people back to work when they've been working the whole time remotely and they can just continue to do that and it would be much, much safer. Moving on, the University of Washington reported that at least 121 students have tested positive for the virus and that 112 of them lived in the fraternity houses near the Seattle campus. The university's medical school has started pop-up testing sites all around the university. However, this is something to keep an eye out for moving forward as universities are set to reopen in the fall. Are they going to reopen fully? Are they going to do online classes? And if they reopen, are we going to see dramatic spikes in cities where there are a lot of college students? So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Next up, seven-day average case totals in the U.S. set record highs for the 27th straight day on Sunday, July 5th. Officials in states with certain virus cases issued dire warnings started to tell people they need to wear masks they need a social distance and they blame the outbreaks on early reopenings however according to a lot of health officials the outbreaks we're seeing right now are not due to us opening too soon but they're mostly due to people not following guidelines put in place. In some cases, states did reopen up too soon. However, in most cases, people simply aren't adhering to social distancing guidelines. People aren't wearing masks. Ultimately, we're going to see an increase in cases no matter what if people aren't following these guidelines. In Florida right now, new cases exceeded 10,000 in a day on Sunday for the third time in the past week after the state posted record highs of 11,000 458 cases the other day. These new cases in Florida push the state's total caseload past 200,000 cases, and that is a mark only passed by two other states, which is New York and California. So now there are three states with over 200,000 cases total. So it'll be important to see what the developments are here, if we're continuing to see exponential growth in states like Florida and Texas, or if things start to level out. And finally, before we get into the stimulus update from Eugene Scalia, the subway has always seen more riders than the bus systems. However, during the virus, this has changed dramatically. At the height of the pandemic, average daily ridership in April and May was 440,000 people on the subway and 505,000 people on the buses. And right now, these numbers have increased dramatically to 752,000 riders on the subway and 830,000 riders on the buses. So daily ridership has increased about 50% from when it was at all-time lows earlier in the pandemic. And this is very important because it shows how the pandemic is going to affect a lot of aspects of our life that people aren't even going to really notice at first. And that one thing is that people are not going to be taking the subway as much. People might be traveling different ways than they used to by taking the bus, taking Ubers. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that 
plays out. Now let's get into the second stimulus package update in the meeting on Fox Business News yesterday with Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. He appeared on Fox News on Sunday and expressed optimism over an economic recovery and resurgence as nearly 5 million jobs were gained in June, 4.8 million to be exact. However, he warned that people must be smart moving forward about dealing with the ongoing virus for the growth to continue. He said right now, if people don't follow the guidelines put in place and people aren't smart, then we're going to see dramatic increases even more than we are seeing right now. And that could really hurt the full economic recovery that people are looking towards. He said that there is a reason for optimism right now, even as most states are seeing increases in the number of cases. He says that I believe that we can continue to reopen workplaces safely. He made clear, however, that this is only if people take the proper precautions that states are putting into place, that the federal government is putting into place, that business owners are putting into place. He recognized that many Americans right now are still out of work and that the Trump administration will have to continue to help in areas where assistance is needed in the second stimulus package. So this is good news. He said that they definitely will be continuing assistance in areas that are the most hard hit and for people who need help. One thing he specifically backed up and he talked about was President Trump's support for a payroll tax cut. He said it would play a significant role in people getting back to work and in the second stimulus package. And we've heard this multiple times, how a payroll tax cut will definitely be included in the next stimulus package. This doesn't mean it will be the only aspect and the only thing for support. However, it will play a major role according to Eugene Scalia. He goes on to say that he does not think that a $600 per week enhanced unemployment benefits is going to be needed going forward. And when asked if he supported trading the enhanced unemployment benefits, the $600 per week or $2,400 per month payments with a payroll tax cut, he goes on to say how it was a really important thing to do to implement the $600 per week and $2,400 per month payments during the pandemic when everything was going on. He explained how Americans across the country were basically being told, and we needed to take measures, but they were basically being told, you can't go to work right now. So he said people were being told not to go to work, so they had to supplement these $600 per week payments because they weren't letting people go to work. But he said, I don't think we need that $600 benefit moving forward because we want businesses to open up and we want people to go to work. We don't want people to stay at home. So he said he doesn't think they are needed moving forward. He goes on to explain how during the so-called Great Recession 10, 12 years ago, he said how the added federal unemployment benefits was only $25 a week. And now during the CARES Act, they implemented $600 per week extra. So he said during this time around when we saw an economic downturn, they did dramatically more and added much more assistance to people who were unemployed than they did previously in a different recession. One thing to keep in mind though with these statements is that you can't compare what is happening right now to what happened happened during the Great Recession 10, 12 years ago because in late March and in April, people were forced to stay at home. They were ordered to stay at home and people could not look for jobs even if they wanted to. But during the Great Recession, people could look for jobs. There just weren't as many available and the economy was experiencing a recession. So it is important to keep in mind that they are very different situations in 2008 and 2009 and what is happening right now. And you can't really compare how much money the unemployment benefits that the government was adding during these two times. Then he goes on to point out how right now we're doing much better than economists, the White House, and everyone was projecting. He said spending, retail spending, consumer spending, new home starts, all of these have actually been very encouraging. So he said this is a very good sign and this is a reason why we should be optimistic moving forward. So he said even though we're seeing increases in cases in specific areas, he said how all of the economic indicators over the last six weeks or so have been very promising. And then finally he goes on to say how a lot of discussions toward the second stimulus package will take place towards the end of the month after the July recess. He said they definitely will be talking about these enhanced unemployment benefits, these $2,400 per month payments. He doesn't think these will be extended. They may do some sort of back to work bonuses. They may reduce these enhanced unemployment benefits, but he also thinks a direct stimulus check will be implemented similar to what we saw in the first round. So I'll keep you updated on anything new that comes out, but that is your Monday, July 6th, second stimulus check and stimulus package update. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now let's get into the $50 
free stock giveaway. All you need to do to be eligible is like the video down below, be subscribed to my channel, and comment down below these three stocks. The first stock is JD.com, and the stock ticker symbol is JD. The second stock for today's video is C Limited, and the stock ticker symbol is SE. And the third stock for today's video is going to be Dominion Energy, and the stock ticker symbol is D. So be sure to comment down below those three stocks. Anyways, don't forget to get your two free stocks valued up to $1,400 when you download the Webull investing app using the link down below. Join our Power of Finance Investors group if you're interested in the stock market investing and how to make money in general. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like the video down below, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.